Okay, so let's talk about installing PowerShell 7. Now, PowerShell comes pre-installed on all Windows systems. So if I come down here and I do a quick search for PowerShell, I'm going to find Windows PowerShell, and I have the option to run as administrator. I also have the PowerShell ISC and 64-bit versions of PowerShell. But if I open up PowerShell, and let me blow this up, because that's going to be really hard for anybody to read. Let's make it on 18. Okay, that should be a little easier to read. So if I do dollar sign PS version table, which looks up an environment variable for my PowerShell version table, you'll see I'm running 5.1. Now, I'm actually running a fairly updated Windows system here. So it's running version 5. It's not running version 7. Well, there's a couple of reasons behind that. One is that Microsoft... When they open source PowerShell, was shortly after they open source PowerShell, they actually did a, they started diverging PowerShell directly from its uh, complete integration with Windows. So version 6, version 7, you can download separately, and you're also going to be able to find them available for <laughs> Linux and Mac OS. So, I mean, it's great because we get to use PowerShell now on a multiple uh, multiplicity of different platforms, but that is something that we need to be aware of. So if you think you're running PowerShell version 7, which is the current version 7.2, the time I'm recording this video, double check and see which one you've actually got on your system, and then you might want to go out and get the latest version. Now, the other thing to be aware of is that when they did version 7, they did it as a parallel install to version 5. So when you install version 5 or version 7, it's going to keep version 5 intact. In fact, they even have different executable file names. Um, PowerShell version 5, the executable is PowerShell, and in version 7 is PWSH. So, how do I get PowerShell? All right, there's a variety of different ways we can get PowerShell version 7. We can get it from the Windows Store, but that's not the preferred method. Um, it actually works, but because Windows Store applications have some restrictions on them, there are some things in PowerShell that won't work, most notably PowerShell remoting. So the preferred way for Microsoft is to use WinGet, and our command is WinGet, and I'm going to use WinGet to search for PowerShell. And it does a quick search for me. And it comes up with all kinds of PowerShell stuff. So we're going to see PowerShell over here from unknown ones. We're going to see a Microsoft PowerShell. We're going to see Windows Terminal. We're going to see a PowerShell preview from Microsoft.PowerShell. So if I want to filter this down a little bit more, I can do a search for Microsoft.PowerShell, and that's going to give me just my Microsoft PowerShell stuff. And so we see two of them here. Right? So we have our current version, PowerShell, version 7.2. Also see we have a preview version of 7.3. Now, we probably don't want to install a preview on a production system, so it's going to be this one that we want. So here's our command. It's winget install, and I want... Uh, ID, dash dash ID, Microsoft dot PowerShell. And I'm going to do from the source WinGet. And that should start downloading and installing for me. And here we see it working at the bottom of my little window here. Now I said there's a few ways to get it. This is one, this is the preferred way to do it according to Microsoft. Hold on a second while I respond to that UAC message. This is a preferred method according to Microsoft. Um, there is another one, and that is you can download it from GitHub directly. So for that, I'm going to open up another tab over here. And I'm going to go to, spell git correctly, github.com. And I want to search GitHub for PowerShell. By the way, WinGit works with Windows clients. It does not work with Windows servers. That's okay. We can do things like this. So at GitHub, we're going to see PowerShell, forward slash PowerShell. That's the one we want. I'm going to click on that, and we're going to scroll down till we get to this section that says Get PowerShell. And here we're going to see our installed downloads. So we're going to see Windows x86, 
we're going to see Windows X or Windows X64. There we go. X86, Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Red Hat, OpenSUSE. You get the idea. And then we're going to see these in LTS, uh, stable or preview. And some people like the LTS, the long-term support version. I tend to lean towards a stable one. The preview one is going to be that, hey, where this isn't previews, this is beta. Don't trust it in a production environment. But hey, if you want to play with the new tools that are coming out in like an isolated environment or a test system, that'd be great. So you can download the MSI and from here and then double click on the MSI to install the software as well or move it over to another system and install it there if you want to install this on several places you could right you can take your MSI throw it on a network share go to different computers run it from there okay so that gets us PowerShell itself now I just installed PowerShell 7 right so let me go ahead and exit out of here and I'm going to click on my start and I'm going to see right here PowerShell 7 x64. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and again I'm going to bump this up a little bit here. Let's do what oh, font was what I wanted. Uh, let's go 20. Okay. I don't care about the shortcut. All right. And you can see here we're running PowerShell version 7.2.6. The same command works. Dollar sign PS version table. If you want to review that. Um, dollar sign PS version table. Took me a minute to figure out what I did wrong there. Okay, dollar sign PS version table. Hey, isn't that amazing? When you use a dollar sign rather than a print sent sign, it works correctly. So you can pull that up. I mean, it shows you right here, but you know, once you use it for a little while, that's gone away. So this will let you see that, yes, I am actually running, just in case you're working on something real quick. I want to check which version I'm in, make sure I'm in the right one. Great. The reason that's important is because we still have, oops, let me right click, Microsoft PowerShell here. And we see Windows PowerShell, we see Windows PowerShell Admin. Let me go ahead and open up PowerShell so I don't have to deal with the UAC. And this one, dollar sign PS version table, remember we said they install parallel? This one's running 5.1. So that's something to be aware of, right? Because you might open up PowerShell, be working it for a while, and then stop and think, wait a minute, how did I open it up? Which version am I in? This is where you can go to that PS version table and check it out. So I'm actually going to take my PowerShell 7, and it's already pinned my start. So that's good. Okay, now the other thing is in PowerShell version 7, actually, let's open up PowerShell version 5 real quick. So I'm going to open a PowerShell and I'm going to issue the command ISC. And that's going to open up our Windows PowerShell ISC or integrated scripting environment. So the tool a lot of people have really come to like. Now, it simplifies the scripting process quite a bit. It makes a nice little platform for you to work with scripting. So I'm going to open up PowerShell. By the way, right click here and run as administrator if you want administrative rights. So I'm going to go to PowerShell version 7 and ISC, and hey, that doesn't exist. There isn't an ISC for PowerShell 7. It's because the recommendation is to actually use VS Code rather than the ISC. So I'm going to go to code.visualstudio. You can see it up there, visualstudio.com. And I'm going to download Visual Studio Code. And we'll do Windows, I want a user installer for 64-bit. And this will download Visual Studio for me. Something else I just thought of that I got a reference, by the way. If you download the MSI for PowerShell 7 and you run through the MSI process, it'll actually prompt you and ask you a few more questions than if you uh, use WinGet. One of which, by the way, is whether you want to enable PS Remoting, which is something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing this on a variety of different systems and you're using that MSI and the goal is to be able to remotely admin, you need to make sure to check on that option to enable PS Remoting. All right, so now that I have VS Code here, I'm going to go ahead and open my download. And yes, I want to install PS Code or VS Code. There we go. 
Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code is a great platform and it gives you a lot of flexibility, but when you open it up for the first time, it's pretty much just a shell. Let me bump this over to the right screen here. It's pretty much just a shell. So one of the things you may want to do, and I have had this installed before, so that's why mine is coming up a little bit differently than yours probably is. You can adjust the view here and add a bunch of different options. But one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure your PowerShell extensions are installed. So you're going to come to extensions right here, and you're going to do a search for PowerShell. Now, you'll notice, by the way, let me go ahead and take that out and let this finish loading. I've already got my PowerShell extensions installed right here. But if you, you probably don't have that if this is your first install of VS Code. So what you do is you go to Power or do a search for PowerShell, and you're going to find right here Windows PowerShell. And then you're going to have an option to install your PowerShell support. And what that'll do is that'll install the PowerShell extensions. And once you get those PowerShell extensions, you can use VS Code with those PowerShell extensions to do basically the same thing that you would use uh, for your ISC. You can have a main scripting pane. You can have a terminal pane. You can have, mm, go ahead and click on this so you can see it. Um, you're going to have pop up here once this finishes starting a list of PowerShell commandlets. There we go. So you can see that we have a lot of the same capabilities. Close those things that I don't need at the moment. You can see that we have a lot of the same capabilities that we had with the ISC. So we use uh, Visual Studio Code for PowerShell 7. We have a parallel install. We're now ready to start working with interacting with our system using PowerShell version 7 and or scripting using PS, VS Code for PowerShell version 7.